Hi, welcome back. This is part six of handling O-scale track. Still working on our number eight turnout here. Uh, where we left off before, we just had completed uh, getting the frog all spiked down into place. Got our power drop soldered and attached and through the bench work for that. Got the stub rails in off of the frog heading into the uh, staging tracks for my coaling facility. What we're going to be moving on to now is I'm going to be working on this first closure rail uh, for the, basically the straight route. Um, and then the subsequent points, that are the point that will attach to that. Um, I'm utilizing uh, these cast nickel silver points. Uh, I got these again from Blue Cross at right away. Um, the bolt detail and so forth on here, is just, it's, it, it's exceptional. Um, there are various sources you can get these from. This is just where I chose to, you know, get all my parts from. But again, very, very nice in appearance and uh, in uh, its uh, functionality. It's just a very nice part overall. What I did to determine how long I needed to cut my rail for my closure rail here, so I took my point and I got it down here where I know I need it to be because these tabs on this switch point here where we're going to attach our throw bars and they need to have freedom to move within these spaces between these switch ties here. Okay, so that's how a very just simple way, that's how you locate where the point's got to be. And I just measured from uh, the back of the point all the way to the edge of my insulated rail jointer here. Went ahead and cut my piece of rail to that length, um, making sure to file down the edges and so forth like that to get a good uh, uh, get a good snug fit. Don't want any burrs or any uh, excess material in the way. Uh, what I'm going to do here uh, with this rail is I've still got some paint on here and so forth from when I uh, painted these rails. Uh, it's dark chocolate brown color. It's kind of a base color for my weathering process. Um, I like to get the base color on there before I lay anything down so I don't uh, get this all over my ties. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take off that uh, little bit of material here. So when I attach my point, I'm going to come back later and I'm actually going to put solder this in there to get a good electrical connection, okay? So that way we know we've got a good bond and a good connection in there. I'm going to go ahead and just do that real quick and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we begin placing this. Uh, closure rail. Okay, we're back. I ground off that, uh, some of that excess paint off the tip of my rail here. I'm going to go ahead at this point and just slide my, my point onto the edge of my end of my closure rail here. These usually come a little bit, you know, a little bit loose. You're going to have to work these castings a little bit. Might be a little bit of excess flash on them from the casting process and so forth. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now, just slip that into my insulated rail joiner at this end. Just to double check the length, make sure I've got it where I need it to be. Um, and that looks right, right on the money. It's right where I need it. Um, very happy with that. What we do at this point with this first closure rail here, as you can see, it's just it's it's the straight route for the switch here. Uh, it's very easy to work off of at this point. All we're going to do is be utilizing our track gauge, making sure we're engaged. Uh, using our stock rail that we positioned earlier. I'm also going to attach a couple of rail joiners, the glue-ons that we just glued onto the sides of the rail, again for that extra detail, that little bit of visual pop. And uh, we're going to be utilizing for, for a good portion of this straight section, we're just going to be using our standard size tie plates. Uh, however, down here, coming right off the frog, I'm going to be using those wider f uh, flat plates again so that they span that distance here until this other closure rail that's going to be in here uh, moves far enough away from this closure rail to where I can just use two standard tie plates in there. Um, but again, to begin with, we're going to be doing this. And again, this is just going to be more of the same thing. You're almost treating a good portion of this just like a regular straight section of track that you're hand laying. Nothing special to it at all. Uh, what I'm going to do before I begin the spiking, though, is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go ahead and make drill my hole, attach my feeder to this. I'm also going to be making sure that I, I run a drop from this rail. It's going to go underneath my frog and up to the other side of those little stub rails you saw in the earlier video there. That's how I'm going to carry the power across the frog, still leaving the frog isolated. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to bother filming that soldering and wiring process. That's just, you know, basic soldering and wiring. All we're basically doing is creating a jumper there from this closure rail to that little stub rail on the other side of the frog. Once I get that completed, we'll come back, we'll begin doing a little bit of spiking and so forth, and you'll see how we uh, flow along with that. Okay, we're back. 
Uh, I got my jumpers and so forth all soldered in. I'm not going to talk too much more about the wiring aspect of this at this point. I'll do a separate little video on that, a little four or five minute video after all this stuff is done. And uh, show you what was wired, how it was wired, and why. Um, so again, what I've done here is I've got the uh, feeders in place. i got my uh, closure rail down here. I've got it spiked and uh, down here by the insulated rail joiner as well as another spike in this place. I've inserted a few tie plates in a couple of other locations. What that does by skipping just a few ties and putting them every six or five or six ties or so is it'll, it'll hold the rail just in some different spots there and help maintain the correct gauge uh, of the track and so forth. Once I get those secured and the gauge is correct, I'll go ahead and insert the remaining remainder, uh, tie plates and so forth and fill that in. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on doing a few of those right now. And again, we're treating this just like a straight section of track, okay? Um, nothing at all complex about this. This is just virtually treat this portion uh, just as you would any other straight section. Okay, I'm going to come in here, get a gauge where I want it. It's right, it's right on the money. Um, spike the inside first. You know, do whichever side suits you first and uh, go at it. You can see here, once you know, when you actually come down to the spiking part of this, you, you really can fly along with this. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing at how fast you can go. And, uh, and by fast, I don't mean at the expense of uh, quality work or anything of that nature. Okay, we're good there. Move down to my next location here. Ready to put that spike in on that tie. Tie plate moved a little bit on here. I'm just going to relocate it a bit. Got my, my track gauge. Okay, I look pretty good. I'm actually going to have to hold out on it a little bit. The rail's wanting to creep in and narrow up on me a little there. So, again, I'm going to do the inside first and drive that inside spike down. Um, to hold it there so it doesn't narrow up on me, hopefully. Go at it here, get the outside up. Oh, see, stuff moved on me right there for some reason. Let me uh, hold this where I need it. I'll try it again. All right. Okay, hopefully my big head wasn't in the way for all of that, but come back, check our gauge. Very good. Right where I want it. Give another little firm press on those spikes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do uh, from this tie plate here, I'm going to fill in these areas again through here. Maybe a couple of more ties here, and then we're going to be transitioning to those wider tie plates. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and fill that all in, and then we'll come back and uh, progress from there. Okay, hi, we're back. What I continued on with here was the spiking and so forth of this closure rail right here, as you can see, um, out of my joint bar detail. Carry it down to a point here where the other stock rail uh, is actually going to be coming along and curving in to this closure rail. Uh, around this area here is where I'm going to have to transition to using those longer, flatter tie plates. Uh, so I'm going to stop right there. Um, but again, so you can kind of get a vantage point here. Here we are coming off the frog coming down with all our spiking and tie plate detail and so forth. Um, Free-handing the camera right now just to try to get you in there a little bit so you can see what's going on. Um, also got a uh, got my feeder attached and my jumper and so forth so I can jump across the frog. Um, I'm going to come back out down here. This end down here is where my point's going to attach. Uh, when I'm ready to incorporate that. What we're going to begin working on now, and again, this is just the process that I like to use, the order that I like to go in. Um, feel free to go whatever order you're the most comfortable with or whatever that you prefer. Um, the next thing I'm going to be working on is our other stock rail coming off the diverging route. Uh, now this rail is going to be the one that's going to come and it's going to curve back in to the straight route here and carry on down past our points and so forth and actually leads into another switch. Um, I'm going to begin working on that. I'm going to position the camera uh, so you can get a fixed look without me having to uh, hold it and shake the camera around. Uh, but that's where we're going to head to next.